Welcome to It's a Sublime Life, inspiration on living an excellent life and seeing the beauty already in life. You can find It's a Sublime Life on most social media platforms. Just search for It's a Sublime Life. Welcome to It's a Sublime Life. Um, I'm here with Karen Darlington. So, if you could just sort of explain a bit about your background. Uh, that would be nice. Okay. Um, so I started um, in hospitality many, many years ago. Got pregnant with mm. my daughter and realised that that industry wasn't suitable for family life. So I needed to rethink what I wanted to do. So having um, a real interest in food, sports, always trained... Um, and Isabella was poorly, she was 12 weeks premature. So I started to really think about what I wanted to do and what career I could go into to basically last me for the rest of my working life. So um, obviously being at the hospital and and dealing with with everything that had gone on with Isabella, I came into contact with dietitians at the hospital through um, Isabella so I looked into um, the actual course content and it really attracted me to um, to look into it a little bit further started to investigate what a nutritionist a dietitian was all about um, and that sort of sent me then down a path where I knew I needed to end the current career yeah. that I was in and I needed to start something else yeah. so applied to uni um, got a position at Chester University on nutrition and dietetics and went and, and did that four year course cut a long story short decided not to go down that route uh, through one th- reason or another even though I'd been um, intre- I've always trained I'd been interested in sports from all the way from school all the way throughout my life I don't know why I didn't go into that route in the very first place, but it doesn't really matter. Um, I decided to go down the sports route and mm-hmm. and became a um, personal trainer, fitness instructor, looking more at sports nutrition rather than human health nutrition, because mm-hmm. two very different things. Mm-hmm. Um, and so and that sort of started off my career then down into being more of a fitness instructor right. and going down that route. Mm. So I, I was, because um, you mentioned um, uh, that you were doing, um, that you did nutrition and dietetics. dietetics. <laughs> <laughs> um, and if you could just explain what the difference is between diet and dietetics, because I think that leads on to then sports yeah. nutrition. So what you've got to think, dietetics is when the client, the patient, how you want to call that person, who's come to you, they've been referred to you via GP, um, and they will be suffering some kind of, whether it's a disease they need help with, or it may be something that they have an eating disorder, they've been referred to to you for that case. It's such a broad, Uh vast um, scope as dietetics. There's so many different Mm. departments from it. Um, A lot of the the candidates that you will come across are people, obviously, in the the obesity um, Mm. epidemic that we're going through people who are suffering from, they could have had cancer, they need help with that. Like I said, I came across a dietitian through, she was a paediatric dietitian because my daughter was Mm. in intensive care. Um, So it it was such a vast, um, but but it's very different. The human nutrition through disease is very different to sports nutrition. Right, and... Do you want to explain yeah. a bit? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because that. what you've got to think, human nutrition, you are, um, you're trying to just create a balanced lifestyle. And the 
the candidate, the, the client is may or may not have been eating a healthy, balanced diet at that point. So it's more about getting them to eat a balanced diet and following um, a particular government guidelines. Right. So the Eat Well plate, if they sort of follow that. Mm-hmm. Now, sports nutrition, you a lot of people who come to me as a client, they are looking to either, it'll either be they're looking to lose weight, majority of people, mm-hmm. or they're looking to gain some weight. Majority, 80% of clients are looking to lose weight. The, they've come to a point in their life where they've realised that they've put on X amount of weight, they don't know what's happened, but now they want to shift that weight. That diet is very different because then you're starting to eat, especially when you bring exercise into it, you're eating to fuel your body, to fuel exercise. Mm-hmm. It's very, very different the, the the client who's come to you is wanting to lose weight, if they are overweight, you need to look at whether or not they are insulin resistance, what where have what have they been doing to get them to that point in the first place. Looking at their current diet, their lifestyle, looking at um yeah, where they've been really, have they yo yo dieted in the past? Have they been a certain weight then put it all back on because their body will obviously upregulate, downregulate and it's very very different to just human nutrition as such right and that's i suppose um is it is one of the big difference is the the calories between yeah them? so when you're trying to lose weight because your body will run on an energy balance so you, what you've got to think is calories in, if you've got calories in matching calories out, that's giving you an energy balance. Mm-hmm. Now, that will just keep your weight as, as, as you are. Mm-hmm. If, if the client wants to lose weight, they need to create a deficit. Now, that will come from a small amount from food and a small amount from exercise, which creates a healthy deficit for the client to lose a healthy amount of weight each week Um, and vice versa if they're wanting to put on they would create a um, a healthy surplus um, which will then put them in over the Mm -hmm. the amount of calories so it is the it is manipulated through calories Um, it goes down to for me I really look at a client's background what they've been doing where are they up to with regards to their food, their relationship with food, um, is it good or bad, are they eating regularly, have they got good foundations in place to start off with, because if somebody comes to you and they've only, they have the mindset is if they eat less and move more, that's not the best place to start with somebody, they need to understand that they need to fuel the body with food, Mm -hmm. so getting somebody to eat three, four meals a day, regularly with a good um, balance of protein, fruit, vegetables, a small amount of carbohydrates depending on what their goals are and get them consistently doing that before then you start bringing calories into it because without those foundations if their body's not working efficiently then the body's not going to work with yeah. them efficiently anyway. So, yeah. um, And your client that wants to lose weight yeah. versus a client that wants to gain weight is yes there's going to be calorie distant difference isn't there but um to gain that lean body mass then what is the key there to gain lean body mass and this is this is a big thing that i have a lot with especially with the ladies because what tends to happen is ladies will follow a weight loss plan Now, when you're on a weight loss plan, you will lose weight. Not necessarily body fat, but you will lose weight. They'll drop calories. Majority of the time, they're dropping carbohydrates. They will just drop down in calories. The weight they lose is just a mixture of, could be lean tissue, it will be fluid, some body fat, but they just lose weight. And I have ladies that come to me, they've lost they'll be on a certain weight loss plan and they'll come in and oh now I want to tone up 
because they've lost weight and the body's shrunk down, they may have excess skin, they now feel that they need to tone up. Mm -hmm. Now when you go then to somebody who then wants to increase lean body mass but lose body fat, what tends to happen is you have a switch in a body composition. So your body fat will come down, your lean mass goes up, you're not necessarily losing weight, you will lose weight, but your body actually shrinks with you. So there's no loose skin there, and you just fill out and you drop a dress size, and you've already got that tone without that. Mm. Now the food, what tends to happen there, you're, when you're looking f- for that client, it's about making sure that they've got good foundations in to start off with, they're eating carbohydrates, as needed so they're fueling the body correctly but you don't always need carbohydrates so you have your carbohydrates after you've eaten after you've trained sorry that's replenishing what you've um, just used when you've exercised outside of that you need to be eating a diet which is rich in um, good portion of fruit and vegetables more vegetables than fruit protein equal amount for your body weight and a good portion of fats in your diet and this is the big thing healthy fats people are so scared of putting fat in their diet and when you explain to them it's not just fat it's healthy fat and if you want to drop fat you've got to put fat into your diet and that's the big thing there with a lot a lot of my clients i see anyway yeah I mean, do you just want to mention or highlight a few good and bad fats? Yeah, uh, good fats, so anything, cook with coconut oil, um, olive oil, extra virgin olive oil over salad, nuts, seeds, um, avocado, you can have some cheeses that will come in there. You've got, you need to have a variety of different fats in your your diet. Mm. Don't just solely think, oh, I'll cook with coconut oil coconut oil is great but you you need to switch it and have other fats in there as well change your nuts change put seeds in over broccoli if i have the greens i'll dri- drizzle olive oil over them and oh, add some nice seeds <laughs> yeah and add some seeds into them. you're adding fat into your diet but they are healthy fats yeah, so and yeah. that's the difference with it fats will keep you full for longer as well they take a lot longer to digest in your system so when you're eating a meal which is um protein you've your green vegetables you've got some fats in there that's going to keep you full until your next meal if the portions are correct okay with that. and what are the fats that you won't want to eat too much of so you're looking what you've got to think if you've got saturated fats but you've got good saturated fats and bad saturated fats. So things like, obviously you've got butter in there. Butter is okay in small amounts. Double cream, people will stay away from that, but you can have it in small amounts. Things which are bad fats are things which are like going to the chip shop and having Mm -hmm. the fats from there. Um, Food which is fried, um, you need to stay away from those kind of fats. Be careful when you're cooking with olive oil and you're not raising the temperature too high with olive oil because that will change that fat from being a good fat to a bad fat. So if you're doing a stir fry, go with coconut oil. If you're on a low heat and you're sauteing onions, for instance, that's fine to use olive oil. But it's very easy to switch that olive oil from a good fat to a bad fat. Yeah. And it's very, it's so confusing to yeah. think, well, what do I use? But yeah, anything which is high temperature, smoking coconut oil, because that will, it will, that's what it's meant to do. Anything which is a saute, olive oil is absolutely fine for that. But you can right. change that from a good fat to a bad fat. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it. And what is a, what's the technical term for for that change to like from the good fat to the bad fat? So it turns it into trans fatty acids. That's what it is, which is the bad fats. What you're trying mm. to stay away from. Those kind of fats are in processed foods, takeaways. That kind. Those are the kind of fats you're trying to stay away from. Yeah. So when you speak about healthy fats, those are the good fats. Uh, monosaturated, polyunsaturated, um, those are the good fats that you're looking for. When you're sort of shifting over to your trans fats, 
hydrogenated fats, them are the ones you want to steer away from. Um, right, now, but you and I obviously know quite a bit about nutrition, uh, what's in food, what you should and shouldn't eat, as do you know a lot of the population mm-hmm. but now what happens between knowing and doing and and you know I I don't have a bad diet but I just wish there was a big button I could press because I know what's right and wrong a big button I press it and magically someone has ordered exactly what I need from the shop to be delivered <laughs> got a she you know very she's telling me what to do and how, how to cook it and it's all planned out and I just, I click my fingers and then and it's all done and it's a, I think for me it's a time issue and it probably will be for everybody a, a lot <laughs> of people yeah. isn't it and but how do you get past that how do you get past that you see and this is the biggest obstacle I always have with most clients Time is the biggest problem that people say they don't have time to prep the food. They don't have time to to think about healthy food. Um, It is difficult and there is no simple way. If you've got the extra money you can go and have, you can't, there are um, establishments that you can go and get prep food from. If food is convenient and it's healthy and you can afford that, then that's that's for you and if you've got a busy lifestyle that is an avenue to go down if not what I always say to clients you've got to be able to put an hour two hours away twice a week to look at your food Mm -hmm. it's difficult when you've got a family and you're running around I completely get that I understand it fully Um, but if you're making a spaghetti bolognese just make double and freeze it to portion it out and freeze it it's the same with cottage pie or anything which is family friendly and you have got a family and you're struggling just just add double ingredients in so you've always got portions in the freezer for when you um, haven't got the time to make food from scratch someone who's on a plan who they've got they're doing a six eight week plan it's very difficult you've got to just get in that mindset of this is what i need because your food is what will get you through Mm. and it is uh, this is the conversation I have constantly with clients Mm. food is people's barrier and if they can wave a magic wand (laughs) and try and get it sorted I know but I always say before you go to bed and I know it's hard just look in the fridge have you got your food ready for the next day because it's very easy especially when you you want you've got a goal in mind you've got something coming up and you need you you're so determined that you want to get to this goal you've de- you've decided that you're going to follow a certain plan if you're not prepared it will just something will happen the next day or whenever it is if you've not got your food something will happen and you will fall off plan and it's as simple as that That's it. so it's being super organized nice. and just accepting it is going to take you a bit of time, time. And it is that, and this is, you, and I say this to lots of people, there's so many sacrifices to put into place. If you've got an end goal in place that you want to drop a dress size or um, shift X amount of body fat or whatever your goal is, you have to be prepared to make some sacrifices. And that is maybe staying up an extra hour before, not watching the television, turn your television off, get your food ready. Mm. These are the things that you have to do to get you to that end result. And mm. it's not ideal. And sometimes it's you think, well, I, I don't want to miss the television, mm. but you have to weigh it up. If you want that result at the end, you have something has to give along the way. And, and, and I can do it, yeah, and mm. I can do it really easily with exercise. Yeah, uh, I know. <laughs> everything it doesn't matter the state of the house it it doesn't matter about so many other things I've got to get out in the morning and do my exercise Mm -hmm. um and if I don't for me there are consequences so I and it's more or less immediate so if I don't exercise in the morning by two o'clock in the afternoon I'm in so much pain I've got to go and lie down in, in bed that and 
so for me, everything clears. I've, I've made it my uh, work, yeah. my social life, obviously my exercise, everything. I can do it Without with ease, yeah. with ease for exercise because it's that immediate yeah. it's consequence, isn't it? And I wonder if that's part of nutrition. It's necess- not necessarily an immediate consequence. It, yeah. It's weeks until you see... Uh, I didn't. I didn't prepare my food for yeah. these many days, and now this is the consequence. Yeah. Now, but it's not as easy to see the consequences. It yeah. for that one day, a few days, then a week turns into yeah. months, and that's it. And this is the thing, and it. I. It's like I will always say to all clients, you will have a compound effect on anything that you do, and if you change so small. Just make that commitment to make small changes each day and stick to it. Because in turn, that will give you a huge compound effect. So by not being super organised, just just start small. You haven't got to change the world and try and start planning all your food out for the whole week. Start one, one day at a time. If you know that you can't do three days, just plan for the next day and start with there. And that's the best thing that you can do because... That small change will lead into bigger change because you then will start feeling the difference. So you've planned for the one day ahead. Then all of a sudden, that that planning one day ahead, you then realise, I can plan for two, I can plan for three. Mm. And that's how it starts coming clearer. Mm. But it is, it's... Yeah, it is down to that. Yeah. I mean, for me, as well, I was just thinking about that immediate consequence thing um if i um i i I don't i'm not i don't crave sugary things normally but every now and again i'll have the you know small amount of sweets or even chocolate or or, but actually if i have a bit too much of that i can there is immediate consequence for me i don't feel very well i feel a bit yeah it it is an immediate consequence do do you think not everybody gets that or not everybody is interpreting how they're feeling exactly. and, put, and puts it down to the food you they can't make that link of, oh, I really feel like I'm I I'm on a here and... agree with that completely because what will happen especially when someone started on more of a, a healthy eating they, they've decided this is what they're going to do and then all of a sudden they they'll they'll eat something they'll be clean eating as such and then they will eat something which wasn't on their plan and it will make them realise that they that how it's made them feel. Up until that point, they most of the time they'll complain that they have no energy, they're lethargic, they've got headaches, they have stomach ache, they have IBS. There's so many complaints that they come to you with and then but it's all down to this is just me. I've got a busy life, I've got a family, I've got two or three children, I've got a husband to look after, I've got a full-time job, I commute. They put it down to their lifestyle, not necessarily putting it down to the food that they're eating. And then once they actually start seeing, once you start eating a cleaner diet as such, and then you, you have that one meal which wasn't on plan, and then all of a sudden that feeling comes back and it's like, oh gosh, I don't feel very well. And yeah. that's when they sort of, is it the food? Or yeah. I've had it before with clients and they've they've not touched any alcohol, but then they've been out on, for a meal. And then the next day they've said that they felt hungover, but they've not had any alcohol. And then I say to them, what did you eat last night? Oh, I've had a pizza or I've had this. And I was like, it's the food. It's the mm-hmm. food that you're eating. There's a connection there. And this is where then they start realising how healthy food makes them feel and this once people start to realize that what you're putting in your body has an effect on your emotions how you feel your hormones that's the switch then because then they have the connection of well everything I'm putting in if it's making me feel good I want to feel good all the time and that's when they start and that's when they really get the connection with it yeah because it is that yeah um do you go much into um because obviously every human is different and uh, certain people will have uh, allergies mm-hmm. for certain foods do 
look deep into that or do you is it something that you might flag with someone as something that, that they might go and look into for themselves so that you can adapt your their nutrition plan yeah it- so scope of practice because i'm even though i've done dietetics i'm not a registered i didn't register so okay. i have to be very careful as every um personal trainer would there is even though i can give the advice but I've, out of my scope of practice, I wouldn't. I would send somebody up. If they come to me and said they feel like they've got an allergy, they they need to get that diagnosed first, first and foremost. Mm. So either they would then go off and see a dietitian themselves or they would come back to me. But it's all about them. If they come and say, yes, I've got a wheat intolerance and it's been diagnosed, then yes, we can sort of adapt that. I can't personally... Um, mm. go in that scope of practice with them it's just mm. beyond my scope I wouldn't touch it with them mm. but if they come to me and said yes I've been diagnosed then we would look at I would look at food with them and say look substitute this for this substitute that for that mm. but until they've been diagnosed then yeah it's mm. okay um what about um children and nutrition I think um what's in my mind is you know tackle the family tackle the adults in there and that will just fall into place that is that your experience or is there something else that you that somebody can do or i think you obviously your family life has such an effect on what you do at home this is for me anyway what we do at home the children look at the way that we eat the way we um, interact with each other so the food we eat at home is all home cooked food. Um, I try and make sure that they're eating, there's vegetables on the plate on every single meal that they have. And we have fruit after every single meal before they can have, if they have a pudding or a yogurt or something. Mm. But it, it's just making sure that they can see that food is cooked at home. Yes, we do go out and I will allow them to have pizza because it's a balance. I don't want them to yeah. feel that they've been deprived of something. But I'll get the children interacting so we'll make pizzas at home so they can make their own pizzas, they can put their own toppings on. I'll get them involved in what they're eating. Every day before we go to school, at our school, we get sent a menu so we discuss what the options are. And then oh, really? That's yeah, good. yeah, yeah. So we discuss what what the options are, what they like, what they don't like. Because a lot of the time it's written, and they don't wouldn't really understand what's on there. So I sort of abbreviate it rather than it being a goujon. It's a fish finger, so <laughs> it makes it clearer for them to make the choice. And then from that choice, then we decide what we're having for dinner, and it's home cooked food. And b- believe me, it's not always straightforward. It's come home and we've they're not eating it but we sort of they they do eat the the vegetables and they do eat the fruit and and that so we try and make it so that's a nice idea actually because that um, i get a menu for what they reckon have at school as well so it's a nice idea to look at it and we discuss the healthier options yeah so we talk about it and it's like on a friday they have um they call it chippy friday because they have fish on a Friday, and they said, it's Chippy Friday on a Friday. But then that that's something new this year. So now we make more of a healthier choice in the evening, mm-hmm. um, where on a Friday used to be Treat, fri- treat Tea Friday. So mm-hmm. we'd have more of at like pizza or I'd make them a burger or something at home and yeah. do it that way. So we switched it. But it's all, and even my five-year-old will come out of school and he'll say, Mom, I've made a good choice today. <laughs> so he knows what's good and what's bad so we try and make sure that we do talk about food and we talk about um the the good good food and what's good what's bad um like i said i don't deprive them of Mm. stuff but i allow them to make their own choices with certain things and with children i think you know whenever i've got mine we're out running about Mm. swimming they have gymnastics classes a week swimming classes yeah. a week um just constantly moving active. yeah <laughs> and active Ooh. isn't it yeah yeah definitely so yeah i've got oh no i've got various 
So in my fridge at yeah. the moment, <laughs> okay. I've got three types of milk, milk. or milk substitutes. Yeah. And look what I, I discovered this one oh, lately, okay. and it's just like an oat yeah. drink. Have you tried it? No. It's okay. quite nice, and it's it's nicer than soya. Okay. Well, to me, it's nicer than soya. That one is a bit too coconut, like yeah. coconut sort of milk replacement, and obviously normal milk. But um, we when we like talked, didn't we? Like talked, we talked um, before this for a few minutes, and I just said to you. I've looked at the soy milk and there's only three percent soy in. Yeah. But and you talk about eating clean. Um. So, for instance, let me just. I'm just reading the back of the oat milk substitute. So these are the ones that I'm. You know, I'm unsure about acidity regulator, dip potassium phosphate, calcium carbonate, calcium phosphate. Uh. I'm sort of thinking, is are they naturally occurring? Should we be consuming them? You know, and is that in fact is that a worse thing to be drinking the milk, or does it depend on your? Well, your main ingredient it's oat based, and you and in brackets in this. So what you, I always say to clients, whatever your first ingredient is, that's your main ingredient. Yes. Okay. So this says oat base, and then in brackets it says water, and then it's got oats underlined with 10%. Okay, so it's mainly water, mm. and then there's 10% of oats. Now it's got rapeseed oil in it, and all these, the calcium carbonate, calcium phosphate, obviously they've, they've, they need to fortify it, with vitamins and minerals, and that's that's what they've done. Are they from so? What is soya. that? Is that what they are? Yeah. So um, the acidity regulator. That's not uh, dip dip di potassium phosphate. So two. That's two potassium phosphates. They're a mineral that they've added into it. A di, acidity regulator. Not sure. Rapeseed oil. I'm not sure why that would be in milk it's it's confusing isn't yeah. it you kind of think i'm so your calcium I... carbonate your calcium phosphates iodinized salts yeah so they have fortified it with um with your vitamins and minerals potassium phosphorus it's all fortification of vitamins and minerals and that's what apart added from the diet yeah <laughs> yeah so is the dye whatever uh, potassium dye potassium phosphate? So dye would is two potassium phosphate. So it's one to Google. Isn't yeah, it? the thing is with milk, and it's and this is the thing: no milk, no soy. Especially when you're looking at it, saying it's no milk, no soy. You need to look at what's in it. Yeah, it goes down to what's healthy: butter or margarine. What, where's the margarine come from? It's been a fortification to look like a product. Mm. So what are they making it out of? Mm. And this is what you need to... The consumer needs to read packets and yeah. be conscious of, of what they're consuming because it's not always healthy when you, even though it looks healthy. Yeah. It's a marketing. There's a yeah. lot of marketing that goes into it. So, so you would look at that Anything you're unsure about, if you I couldn't pronounce it, it and <laughs> if I couldn't pronounce it, I'd be thinking I'd be definitely not wanting to consume that. If it's got um, like an O's O S E at the end, mm. it's definitely a sugar oh, okay. at the end of it. Um, so if if there's any, like sometimes you pick up packaging and you'll read the ingredients and some of them begin with an X and you can't actually even pronounce it. If you can't pronounce it, how do you know what it is? Mm. You don't know what it is. They, they fortified it with something. And what you've got to think, and the manufacturers are very clever to put in preservatives, additives. They need to, to sell products, so it needs to have some palatability in there. So lots, like this, he's got salt in there. Um, the salts in there so it's either have sugars or it'll have salts to give it palatability mm. is it, it is it a whole food 
don't really know without mm. looking at it. You're looking for minimally processed foods, in my yeah. my yeah. my opinion. That's what I always say to clients. Milk's a funny one. Milk yeah, it's a funny one. And I think probably the thing to do is to completely take it out. Mm. <laughs> and this is if, a thing. If you, yeah, take it out of your diet. If you. You, sometimes you think you're doing right and you're not necessarily doing no. right and that's yeah. the thing there's ingredients in products and this is where it goes back to the consumer the, to the manufacturers the manufacturers obviously want to sell their product mm. we're living in a day and age where everybody is so health conscious when you start taking putting advertising it's no milk no soy you automatically think that that's a healthy product mm. is that necessarily healthy i don't know without proper looking at it Mm. do you know what I mean yeah yeah so and this is what you know everybody's got to do to look to to have a healthy diet and constantly yeah um what you've got to think I always say you're looking for minimally processed foods yeah so anything which has had a process attached to it so like your milk, for instance, now you've chose the green milk on there. That's mm. gone through a processing to take some of the cream out. Mm. So if you were trying to stick to minimally processed, you'd opt for the blue milk mm. rather than green because that's mm. gone through more of a processing. Red milk is even more of a processing because it's had everything pretty much stripped out of it. Yeah. So you're looking for minimally processed foods because you when you're eating whole foods, minimally processed foods, your body's going to utilise them a lot better. When you start putting ingredients into your body where there's been ingredients added in, if you can't pronounce them, what are they? How is your body going to break them down if, you're not, if you mm. don't know what they are? Mm. And this is the thing. Your body needs to work efficiently. So just if you can eat minimally processed foods, single ingredient foods where you're cooking from scratch... That's the key to it. Yeah, and I suppose when I've tra- really, really gone into that and really gone to the basics, no additives, preservatives, nothing artificial, um, I suppose it's then when I struggle uh, about how to make the meals that I'm used to. And you've mentioned, you know, shepherd's pie. Um, now, there are stock cubes Mm -hmm. that you can that you would add in now i've looked at the stock cube list of ingredients and thought i'm not add that but then of course some of the flavor goes and then you think oh okay i need a complete other alternative because this isn't going to work anymore because it's it's not got the taste anymore Yeah. (laughs) yeah so it's this whole thing is 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 very time consuming it is, isn't it? You need a lot of time, yes, to prepare, yes, to look at labels, to completely dismiss one one recipe that you've always loved because that's not clean. And no. <laughs> and this is and this is the thing. It's like yes, you're trying to make your food as clean as possible. Um, it is difficult when you, especially when you've got a family and you need to make meals that they're going to eat as well with your, when you've got children. But adding in herbs and spices, um, I tend to use, rather than using the, the crumbly ones, the, mm. the actual gels uh, okay. for stock, If because I will put stock into it. Mm. You can order, you can go and you can order um, certain products where it has got nothing added into it. But again, it's co- it's more cost. Um, you've mm. got to weigh it up. Um, but yeah, being very mindful of what you're putting into ingredients. Adding in a tin of tomatoes into certain things, is that going to really hurt? I would add in a tin of tomatoes just mm. to give it a little bit of flavour. I use lots of herbs and spices in foods. Yeah, just that's to a, good, give it, a good tip, really, isn't Yeah, it? just to herbs. give them just some flavour because food will become very boring. And, mm. and this is the thing. If it's boring, you tend to not want it. 
because mm. there's no there's no enjoyment there, food's there to be enjoyed. Mm. And mm. it's such a big, not just a, it's your family home, it's a big social aspect, food has become. And if you can't enjoy it, then you sort of, why am I doing it? If you're yeah. eating the same foods day in, day out, it's finding recipes which you can stick to and they become clean. Yeah. A lot of curries, they're quite good, um, a good substitute, make a lot of curries from scratch um, and that you can make those pretty clean. Slow cooker, I use that quite a lot yes. for chickens yeah. and, and lots of different things. So, But it's just knowing the recipes and being able to substitute certain things and you are right mm. when you start looking at certain new ingredients you think I've always done this what where do I go from there but it's just trying to find an alternative and mm. and, and putting it in so back to the button that I wish I could press and yeah everything magically falls into place so um what is what for example do you do or can someone else do for you to make it more like pressing a button or what can you do for yourself that makes it I mean we've mentioned a really good one like you say okay the day before make sure your food is ready Mm -hmm. for the next day like is there somewhere I can go or someone I can go to (laughs) and say I want to clean eat all the time I don't want any uh, nothing artificial I want recipes for everyone to enjoy it I've got a family give me something tell me how much I need to get from the supermarket I literally I just want I mean I could laugh at myself but I want you I want someone I'll take my phone to someone with the app on for my grocery online shopping and I just press what I need and I pay that's fine <laughs> I'm just you know I want it to be that easy but what you know how far can I be met on, on my quest for this, finding my answer? There are places out there to do that where, I, I don't know. Um, you see, in the past, when I've done, I've done boot camps before in the past. Mm. And, and I'm not sure if people who do boot, boot camps do this now, but this is how I did it. I wrote recipes out for everybody. Mm. to make their life easy and all Mm. they had to do was choose recipes to follow Mm. and I think that was a few years ago whether or not people are still doing that I don't know there are obviously trainers out there it's very very difficult and it's very time consuming Mm. and this is the thing if clients will come to me I want you to write me out a plan write out exactly what I can eat give it to me and this is what I what I want to eat yeah. but what you have to remember and this is the difficult bit I wouldn't know what you fancy to eat tomorrow <laughs> and this is where it changes or in three days time so I could write it out for you and you'll get to to Wednesday and think I don't fancy shepherd's pie anymore I want to eat something else so it, then it throws you then and this is where when I did boot camps I put a selection of meals together that they had to choose and then they just made their own meals from that right and it was all recipes but a lot of clients a lot of trainers and a lot of what people do now is they just tend to that they've got a selection of foods you need to go off and put those foods together Mm -hmm. but there are websites out there there's so many healthy eating places i use pinterest quite a lot for healthy food ideas for families um Jamie Oliver, he's really good at looking at... He's got um, a healthy book out, Five Ingredients. That's quite a good one Mm. to use. Mm. Um, So there are places where you can go. Mm. Um, You've just got to go off and see which (laughs) it (laughs) is. But it is difficult. It is. And you've just got to think, well, this is where I'm saying, if you can, especially if you're making food, which is... Um, double ingredients it's not just a chicken breast you can make it for one day two days in advance and do it that way it yeah. is hard yeah and it's uh, I think it, it's hard yes for myself and I've I've been on a nutrition course yeah. you know and I know about it and um, yes it's hard for me and it's also hard to 
influence my children. Now I look at that menu that I get given of, of, of what the meal choices are and I think, I don't think there's anything especially healthy on there. No. <laughs> no, do you think do you think the same? Yeah. And I think, oh, all them puddings are quite high in sugar, all the yeah. wrong fats. Yeah. You know, and I can't control I can't march into school or then, you know, after school club and say this is what I want them to eat. Yeah. It's very difficult. Though. Yeah. It is difficult. Although they've got the, they have got some good things that they don't um you can't take chocolate or crisps into school no. for example. So yes, that is a yeah. good thing. Um, um you see that I'm not sure we they have uh, the amount that many puddings. They do fruit every single day. Uh-huh. Um, they'll have a biscuit on one of the couple of days, and then they, I think they only have puddings once, once mm-hmm. a week. So we don't get loads of puddings on their mm-hmm. menu. Mm-hmm. They do cheese boards as well mm-hmm. at school, so it is difficult. And you, you're sort of putting your ownership into them. I've been into school before because my um, little boy was regularly choosing jack potatoes, cheese and beans every single day. (laughs) That was his choice. And I ended up going into school and saying to them, somebody needs to identify that he's choosing this every day. It's not healthy to be choosing the same meal every single day. And they made a real effort to hide the jack potatoes when he turned up, (laughs) so he had to choose something else. He was only four then. But I did have to go into school because... It hadn't come up naturally that he was mm-hmm. choosing those. Obviously, the school's got a lot of uh, students in there. Um, but for me, when he was coming home and he's saying he's choosing the same meal mm. every single day, and this is where we then made a conscious effort. This is what this is what's on the menu. This is what you've got the choice of. A jacket potato is on the menu every single day. And there are some times when we'll go through it and they'll say, okay, can we have a jacket potato today? I'm like, yeah, you can have a jacket potato, they have tuna or, or cheese. But then we've discussed it because the other options aren't necessarily mm. either healthy or what they would choose to have as mm. well. Mm. And I think, and this is where that what I was saying about, I sort of have to speak in their language to tell them what it is because it's written in a way where vegetable biryani, the children wouldn't know that that's a curry. So I say to them, it's a vegetable curry and, and stuff. So yeah. I try and give them an option where it's what they would understand it to be rather than yeah. it being fish goujons. They don't know. They, when I say to them, it's a fish finger. Oh, OK, we'll yeah. have fish fingers. Yeah. So it just those little things are quite frustrating, especially for, as a parent point of view, to think if they just need to be a more... Yeah child-friendly terms, parsley potatoes, just put potatoes down. Um, (laughs) Um, The other thing I was thinking of is, now obviously I I mentioned to to you this before, but I've got in the habit of having a ginormous pizza (laughs) once a week. And not, nobody can be perfect, can they? And I'm, I'm not saying you shouldn't have a little treat every now and again, but... Now, obviously, I can sustain that amount of calories. There must be... I wouldn't be surprised if there's 2,000 calories alone in that one pizza, which is a, a daily allowance, isn't it? But obviously, I can sustain the calories. But what concerns me is all the other things that I'm not... Um, my body isn't putting up with that I don't know immediately. So all the consequences, apart from obesity which is you know too many calories but but what else you know if you look at yourself and you think you know I'm fine I'm not overweight I can eat what I like Mm -hmm. but actually what other damage may you be causing do you have any so what you've got to think is just on a pizza yes it is there is a lot amount of calories in there there probably is 2,000 calories Mm -hmm. But what you need to think is you need to be adding fruit and vegetables in into your diet. It, it, yeah, people get so hung up on calories, and I'm not saying that they shouldn't be, they should, but there are other things that they need to be aware of as well. Your vitamins and minerals from all your vegetables, all your fruits, 
your antioxidants that are all in fruit and vegetables. So you need to have a diet which is rich in those mm. as well. And the, spirit, and the effects of not having those in your diet would be a negative impact on your immunity, yeah. uh, sleep, yeah. uh, energy levels. Yeah. Your Can gut you health. Gut health, big one, isn't it? Massive. Gut health. There's so many things, especially when you start looking at a diet which is in with those kind um a diet which is a lot of processed foods people sort of eliminate fruit and vegetables out of there the government guidelines is five portions per day how many people actually do eat five portions of fruit and vegetables today i recommend people eat more fruit than they do vegetables i always say it's four to one so four portions of vegetables to one portion of fruit. More vegetables and fruit. Fruit. Right, yeah. mm-hmm. And try and get them. When you're looking at a plate, and, and people haven't got the time to work out how much ca- calories are in certain foods. So I always say to them, everybody's different. Your body size reflects how much you need to eat. Look at your hand, for instance. When you have a plate, look at your fist size and you need two fist size of vegetables on your plate. The amount of people that say, well, I have two florets of broccoli, that's my portion of vegetables, that's nowhere near enough that they need to be eating. You need Mm. to have a third of your plate needs to be in vegetables. Mm. Don't boil them too much because all you're doing is boiling the vitamins out of them. Steam them if you can. If you're doing a stir fry, just a quick hot oil. Keep Mm. the amount of vitamins that is in there because you've got to put these vitamins and minerals into your diet. And we, we we sort of mentioned it earlier, gut health. I know that it's a massive yeah. thing, isn't it? Um, and I've been looking into this and and bringing into my diet things that are going to increase my gut health. But if if you could just briefly go over them, like the pre and pre and pro probiotics. <laughs> so you need to have. This is where you, when you've got a um, good proportion of vegetables in your diet you go into you need to look after the gut health so the good bacteria into you in your stomach going back to sort of whole foods again what you've got to think you, your gut will release digestive enzymes out of your stomach to break food down as it should do now if you if your gut's not working efficiently so that that good bacteria is not there or you're not releasing the the digestive enzymes you won't break food down efficiently as it should do so that's not working and there'll be a trade off you'll struggle to go to the toilet headaches because you might be dehydrated there'll be something there'll be a trade off along the way so making sure you've got a diet rich in pre and probiotics if you've been on antibiotics that can strip your gut mm-hmm. health that can strip the good bacteria out putting probiotics into your diet either through a supplementation or adding them into your into your, through your food so live yogurts are a good one but making sure that the yogurt isn't because it when you look go to, again going back to the manufacturers if you look at greek yogurt authentic greek yogurt will have the good strain of bacteria in there greek authentic yogurt is sorry yeah greek style yogurt is what has been made to look like greek yogurt so there's nothing right. in it so it's again looking at what you're picking up off the shelf does that is that the same for because i've read that kefir yeah, I kefir. Don't know, kefir. yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that the same there or will all kefir have the good bacteria in it It'll or have it. It'll it have should, it. as long as it's it's it is from kefir, then it should have that good bacteria. If you turn it over, it'll tell you what the uh, bacteria is in. If you have a look at the ingredients, mm. it should tell you what the bacteria is in there. Okay. I picked up the other day. Um, I had what was it? I think it was mango and turmeric. Now, which was kefir, right. a kefir drink, um, and. I picked it up because obviously turmeric's really good for uh, anti-inflammatory and I thought oh I'll try that then actually when I'd had a 
read the ingredients, it was tr- turmeric flavouring. So there was no turmeric in it whatsoever. It was just a flavouring in there. So again, going back to reading the, the ingredients. Label, so. But when you look at kefir, it should have it should have your strain of bacteria. It's like your to- you know the total yogurt. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, that if you turn that over, that's got it'll tell you what the oh, okay. the, the bacteria is in there, and that's what you're looking for. So the probiotics put those back into into your body. Um, you can supplement I have supplemented with probiotics I'd probably do it twice a year just to keep everything running smoothly looking after my gut health but again being very careful and mindful of just not picking stuff up off the supermarket shelves or off um, your local health food store because you'll end up spending money for no reason at all Mm. the strain isn't enough if you're just wanting a quick course on them Mm. um Thank you very much. You're it's welcome. been really. Where can people reach you? Are you on Instagram? Yeah. Um, I've Over got... your handle. What's your handle? Can you? <laughs> uh, Facebook. Um, I'm on Facebook, which is Karen Darlington. Instagram is at. Um, oh yeah, at, it's at Karen Darling zero one. Okay. Lovely. That's my Instagram. So people can reach you there. Thank you very much. It's been really lovely to speak yes. to you.